On February 5th, 2019, at approximately 5.45 a.m., a verbal altercation ensued between Lil Durk, King Von, Bezu, and a man named Alexander Weatherspoon in the parking lot of The Varsity, a popular restaurant in Midtown Atlanta. Weatherspoon, a 23-year-old Vice Lord member known for fraudulent activities in the east side of Chicago, became involved in the altercation. Witnesses reported that the situation escalated into violence when 13 gunshots were fired, one of which struck Weatherspoon in his femoral artery. Injured, Weatherspoon stumbled across the road and collapsed in front of the One Cigar Lounge, causing distress among late-night customers. Witnesses immediately contacted emergency services and law enforcement. An SUV with 300 inches displayed on its side was seen leaving the scene simultaneously. Responding swiftly, emergency services transported Weatherspoon to Atlanta Medical Center for emergency surgery, while detectives commenced their investigation, interviewing potential witnesses. The initial examination of the crime scene revealed the presence of 13 shell casings from both a pistol and a rifle. Additionally, a 9 miller handgun was discovered nearby. The case remained unsolved for nearly three months. However, on May 4, 2019, King Vaughn was apprehended and arrested by the Chicago police in connection with the varsity shooting. Nine days later, Bezu was also arrested by the Chicago police on charges of being a fugitive from justice based on an out-of-state warrant. Subsequently, on May 29, 2019, the Atlanta police issued an arrest warrant for Lil Dirk, the final suspect in the case. The warrant implicated Lil Dirk in five felony charges, including attempted murder, a crime carrying a potential prison sentence of 10, 20 years. Simultaneously with the announcement of the arrest warrant, Lil Dirk released a song titled Turn Myself In, containing lyrics alluding to the situation. The lyrics include lines such as, Yeah, 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 heard the story, think I'm finished. Free Vaughn, free Zoo, even though they got the same problem. And, I turn myself in tonight, head down with these cuffs on, just read me my rights. The following day, Lil Dirk conducted an interview at his lawyer's office with WSB-TV, stating that he had nothing to hide and nothing to run from. When asked if he committed the other crimes he was accused of, Lil Dirk responded, Um, no. Later that night, Lil Dirk surrendered himself to authorities at the Fulton County Jail. All three individuals, Lil Dirk, King Vaughn, and Bezu, remained in custody pending further developments. Eventually, Lil Dirk and King Vaughn appeared before a Fulton County judge for further legal proceedings. During the court proceedings, Detective Jeffrey Churchill from the Atlanta Police Department testified about the evidence that led to the arrest of Lil Dirk and King Vaughn. One key witness was a female who claimed to have been conversing with the two rappers at the time of the incident. She stated that a fight broke out in the car in front of them, and she witnessed Lil Dirk brandishing a firearm as gunshots rang out. Detective Churchill further informed the court that Alexander Weatherspoon, the victim, was also armed during the altercation, suggesting that Weatherspoon could have fired the initial shot. Additionally, the prosecution presented alleged surveillance footage that purportedly showed an arm, believed to be Lil Dirks, hanging out of the window of a gray and red camo trackhawk displaying the label 300. The footage allegedly captured the individual firing a firearm towards the victim. Prosecutors characterized the case as gang-related and even had a Chicago police captain testify to confirm Lil Dirk and King Von's affiliation with the Black Disciples, a documented gang. Following the court hearing, Lil Dirk and King Vaughn were ordered to remain in custody at Fulton County Jail. Six days later, during another court hearing, prosecutors requested that Lil Dirk be denied bond and held in custody. However, Judge Kevin Farmer denied this request, stating that although the charges against Lil Dirk were serious, he would grant him a $250,000 bond. The judge imposed certain conditions, including wearing an ankle monitor, adhering to a curfew, and refraining from possessing firearms. Excitedly, Lil Dirk celebrated his release on Instagram after leaving jail. King Von was also released the following day on a $300,000 bond. While out on bond, Lil Dirk and King Von were prohibited from communicating with each other, and their behavior appeared to change after their release. Following his release, Lil Dirk appeared to adopt a slower pace and focused more on his music career. On the other hand, King Von continued to live a fast and perilous lifestyle, despite already having beaten a murder charge in 2017. The arrest drew significant mainstream attention, 
propelling King Vaughn's music career and solidifying his street reputation. He continued to visit O'Block and associate with some of Chicago's most dangerous individuals. This time, however, he would distribute large sums of money and lavish custom jewelry, giving the impression that he was funding and rewarding members of the O'Block street gang for their loyalty and activities. King Vaughn also founded Get Back Gang Entertainment, aiming to provide top O'Block members with rap careers to increase the gang's influence both on the streets and in the mainstream, while capitalizing on it financially. A dark turning point in the story occurred on August 4, 2020, when King Vaughn's notorious rival, FBG Duck, was murdered in broad daylight while shopping in Chicago's Gold Coast Luxury Shopping District. King Vaughn's music frequently referenced FBG Duck and the 63rd and St. Lawrence Gang, often including disrespectful jokes and memes targeting them online. One popular example is King Vaughn's song, Took Her to the O, which describes a confrontation between Vaughn and a man rumored to be FBG Duck, ultimately resulting in a violent outcome. Online rumors regarding FBG Duck's murder started to spread, with the prevailing narrative suggesting that King Vaughn and O Block were responsible for the crime. Fans worldwide began to perceive Lil Durk and King Vaughn as potentially the most dangerous men in hip-hop. Just nine days after FBG Duck's murder, Lil Durk experienced a significant milestone in his career when he was featured on Drake's hit song, Laugh Now Cry Later. The collaboration with Drake brought a massive new audience to Lil Durk's music, leading curious fans to delve into his background, where they discovered a history marred by violence and even death. Despite being on bond and closely monitored by authorities, Lil Durk and King Vaughn embraced the attention garnered from the Drake collaboration and the FBG Duck situation. They further solidified their savage street reputations, disregarding the potential consequences. Both artists were well aware of the scrutiny and surveillance they faced during this time. In his song lyrics, King Vaughn boldly asserted that it was crucial to be armed for certain individuals, including Booney and Chief. He emphasized the need to be prepared and warned of potential consequences. King Vaughn even documented encounters with law enforcement officers upon his arrival at an airport, capturing moments of searches and questioning. He highlighted the persistent scrutiny he faced. However, the tides would soon turn against him. On November 6, 2020, an altercation broke out between King Vaughn and Quando Rondo, a rapper with close ties to NBA Youngboy, with whom Vaughn had undisclosed issues. Tragically, the altercation outside the Monaco Hookah Lounge in Atlanta quickly escalated when Lul Tim, an associate of Quando Rondo, fatally shot King Vaughn. Following Vaughn's untimely death, Lil Durk released his highly anticipated album, The Voice, a little over a month later. The album featured revealing lyrics, particularly in the song Should Have Ducked. Durk shared lines like, I told my PO through the gate that I get high as fuck, and they ask me where I'm a bee in 10 years. I said, the feds. Many fans interpreted these lyrics as Dirk acknowledging the likelihood of facing a significant prison sentence, ultimately accepting the potential end to his unique hip-hop journey. Tragedy struck again seven months later when Lil Dirk's brother, known as D.T. Thang, was shot and killed outside a nightclub called Club O in Harvey, Illinois. The speculation surrounding D. Thang's death suggested that rival gang members found it challenging to reach Lil Durk due to his celebrity status. Thus, they targeted his close associates instead. In the weeks following, more trouble ensued as alleged enemies of Lil Durk reportedly broke into his Atlanta mansion. While shots were said to be fired by Durk's girlfriend India, rumors circulated that this may have been a cover-up to protect Lil Durk from further legal trouble considering he was already a felon on bond. The situation escalated to a new level on October 13, 2021, when the FBI conducted a raid on O'Block and arrested five members of the street gang, including Muwap, who was King Von's right-hand man. These arrests were connected to the murder of FBG Duck. The FBI's intervention further intensified the ongoing series of events and legal complications surrounding Lil Durk and his associates. This turn of events wouldn't come as a surprise to most drill music fans, as there were various pieces of evidence pointing towards O'Block's involvement in the murder of FBG Duck. One notable aspect is that King Vaughn gifted Muwap an O'Block chain just 11 days after the incident. Vaughn also began giving Muwap more recognition on his social media and frequently had him present in the studio. 
there were indications that law enforcement had been monitoring their activities even before the FBG duck incident, suggesting that if King Vaughn were still alive, he would likely be facing charges alongside Muwap. Amidst the chaos surrounding these events, fans wondered about the progress of Lil Durk, King Vaughn, and Bezu's case in Atlanta. In 2021, the victim, Alexander Weatherspoon, was arrested on federal charges related to identity theft and fraudulent financial activities. Given that the victim's cooperation is crucial in criminal cases, his arrest and the global chaos of 2020 likely slowed down the proceedings. However, on October 24, 2022, it was officially announced that the Fulton County District Attorney's Office had dropped all charges against Lil Dirk and Bezu over three years since the initial incident at the varsity. The district attorney made it clear that if King Vaughn were still alive, he would have been indicted for his involvement in the incident, indicating that Dirk's legal team may have shifted the blame to Vaughn, considering his passing. Online fans celebrated the news, believing it to be a significant relief for Lil Dirk. However, it should be noted that the dismissal of charges doesn't necessarily mean he is completely out of legal trouble. Since the defendants were not found guilty and the charges were dropped, it wouldn't be uncommon for the state to intentionally close the case if they believed it could be part of a larger criminal investigation, such as a RICO case. Only time will reveal the full extent of Dirk's legal situation. Some individuals with close ties to these circumstances have hinted that his problems may have only just begun, suggesting that 2023 could bring potential legal issues for Lil Dirk. In summary, the dark story of King Von and K.I. is a tragic reminder of the consequences that often accompany street life. Their lives were cut short by violence, highlighting the harsh realities faced in their communities. Their legacies serve as a call for change and an end to the destructive cycle of violence. May their stories inspire positive transformation and a brighter future for all.